This is an $11,000 mountain bike. Every expensive part and exciting piece of new technology you could wish for is specced on this bike. It's a dream bike for many, but how much better actually is it? I'm going to show you the difference between this and a carbon fiber Cannondale, which costs $5,000, a great value $2,000 full suspension Marin 29er, and a bargain $600 caliber hardtail. This looks awesome. Hydraulic disc brakes, aluminium frame, and a RockShox suspension fork. This is a lot of bike for your money. It's called the Calibre Rake 27, and it's available for just $650 from Go Outdoors stores if you have a membership card, which costs about $6. With no rear suspension, a hardtail offers a lightweight and budget-friendly option to those starting their journey into the world of mountain biking. The 100mm Travel RockShox Duty suspension fork and Clark M2 hydraulic disc brakes with a large 180mm rotor on the front should mean it handles and stops well. But the 27 and a half inch wheels look really small compared to most modern mountain bikes which roll on 29 inch wheels. And the tyres look quite slick so I am nervous to tackle the gnarly downhill terrain in a minute. Let's see if my fears are justified and find out what it's like to ride. Okay, so heading up the climb on the Calibre Rake 27. As you'd expect from a hardtail, it feels light. Lots of power being transmitted to the rear wheel from my feet. No rear suspension moving around and sapping my energy. But I can feel all of the bumps. So it's not the most comfortable, but it is quite quick. Right hand turn here onto the flat part of the fire road. Change a few gears and we're dropping into the double black diamond cougar trail here which is uh, pretty fearsome on any bike so I'm nervous on this hardtail with the, the slim tyres and straight away there's no rear suspension and I'm getting bucked all over the shop off some of these drop-offs. Not being able to be as aggressive as I usually would. I tell you what, this is flipping fun, this is. I'm really surprised just how sprightly and entertaining and also confidence inspiring it is. So thanks to the good geometry, it feels really cool. <gasps> oh my gosh. <laughs> that definitely feels like a double black diamond trail. This was way more fun than I thought it would be. It's got a nice wide bar on it. The damping on the forks works really well, which is amazing considering how cheap they are and it shows just how good a modern fork is. The tyres were way grippier than I expected. I looked at the, the smooth profile and I was like, this is gonna be gnarly, but actually it hooked up pretty well. And the geometry of this frame, like with a reasonable reach, quite a slack head angle, it's really confidence inspiring. The brakes do everything you can want them to. I mean, the limitation is the tyres. The big front rotor seems good, gives you a bit of leverage. Yeah, well, what a machine. This Marin Rift Zone 1 costs $1,699, which is over three times the cost of the rake. But for that, you get more aggressive geometry, a 130mm full suspension frame, a larger 140mm travel suspension fork, and larger 29-inch wheels. All this will mean increased grip, control, and most importantly, speed. Looks-wise, I love the paint job, and the internal cable routing is super smart. The one-by drivetrain means that this bike has a single front chain ring and the mech has a one-way clutch, which should mean that the chain won't fall off. And the boost wheels and oversized crank axles should translate into stiffness. It seems like a big step up from the Calibre hardtail, but there's only one way to find out. Let's ride it! Well, there's loads of grip from the full suspension and uh, the bigger wheels are making it feel really calm on this part of the climb. It's carrying a little bit more weight than the Calibre, 
It's got a big cassette on the back, so that's giving me a really nice wide spread of gears so I can pick a nice easy gear for the climb. Now this bike doesn't have lock on grips, which is a little bit worrying in the wet weather. And that's something that you'll want to upgrade fairly sharpish once you get on it. The rear suspension gives loads of traction on the climb. So the back end doesn't skip about like it can do on a hardtail. So that extra travel translates into traction on these steep parts of the climb. It is a bit heavier than the hardtail. And you can tell that as you're climbing up the hill. Okay, onto the flat now. I've just got the one set of gears to worry about under my right hand, unlike the double chain rings of the caliber. Now this bike doesn't have a dropper post, so I'm not gonna stop and put the seat down. I'm gonna go straight in. Cougar, extreme black. Okay, off the drop. Straight away, the rear suspension is giving me loads of traction that I didn't have before. The tires feel really great. I love full suspensions. Not going off there on this bike. Oh. Oh. That was class. So ride impressions. Um, it definitely feels a bit more stable than the hardtail. There's a bit more weight behind it. There's more suspension travel front and rear, wider tires and bigger wheels. So it feels really confidence inspiring on the descent. Uh, it gives you a bit more traction than the hardtail and just barreling into stuff not really caring what's underneath you is way easier on this. The hard tail, you've got to have a bit of finesse about you. Um, I think it's time for an upgrade though. Let's find something with a dropper post and a bit more spec. This is the Cannondale Habit LT1 and it looks gorgeous. But what are you actually getting for that $5,500 price tag? Well, under that paint job is a carbon fiber frame, meaning less weight and more stiffness. Super trick. Bigger disc rotors and four pot SRAM brakes mean that stopping shouldn't be a problem either. Another thing that you get on this bike is a dropper post. With just a press of a lever, it puts your seat out the way for the descent. And I think that's going to be a big bonus. The Maxxis 3C tires on this bike are triple compound. That means they use three types of rubber combined. Hard underneath the center knobs for support, medium compound on the top of the center knobs and soft rubber on the sides. All of this tech means that the tires cost $106 each, so expect maximum traction. The suspension is also really trick with a burly fork, piggyback shock and adjustable damping front and rear. There's even a lockout lever on the rear shock so you can save energy on the climbs. Let's go and find out how this bike rides. Okay, so here we are on the Cannondale Habit LT. The LT stands for long travel. So this bike is definitely aggressive and burly and ready for the descent. Now I've got the lockout on the rear shock closed. So I've got some super efficient pedaling uphill. I've got the dropper post up. So this bike has a dropper post, which is a bit of an upgrade from a static post because just like an office chair, you can choose if you want it up for the climbs as it is now or down for the descent and out of the way of your backside. And this bike has progressive geometry, so the seat tube's nice and steep, so my weight is far forward on the bike, which really helps with climbing, especially when they're going to get steep like now. High cadence, not putting in too much energy. I've reached the top of the climb now, I'm on the flat fire road, and this is where all that technology really pays off, because I just pop the dropper post, unlock the shock, and immediately I'm in descent mode. Let's see what she's like on Cougar. Okay, so the quality of the suspension is just incredible. I can feel I've got so much traction and it's so confidence inspiring compared to bikes with cheaper forks and shocks. I can move the bike around. It's ever so controlled. I'm noticeably quicker coming into these braking areas and it just feels like the tyres are hooking up amazingly. And am I going to hit the drop on the big bike? Of course I am. 
That was sick. Like, it costs more money, but this is a proper machine for hitting gnarly tracks like that. The quality of the suspension travel is incredible. The way the damping works and how progressive the suspension is just means that it feels bottomless. You can really barrel into stuff. You know you've got traction. You know that once you get on the brakes, you'll slow down. Those four piston brakes are incredible. You just brush the levers instead of having to pull them towards you. The geometry is aggressive. It's got more travel. Wow. <laughs> I hit that last step down at the end, just like super confident. Just dropped in, put in a quick pedal, pulled for it. And at no point did I go, oh, you know, what's it gonna be like on the landing? Super confidence inspiring. But what if I told you that the next bike costs as much as two of these? Is this the ultimate trail bike? This is the S-Work Stump Jumper T-Type from Specialized, and it costs $11,000. But for that, you get literally everything you could ever ask for from a mountain bike. Most parts are made from carbon fiber, like the frame, wheels, handlebars, and cranks, which all combine to mean that the bike has a weight of just over 27.8 pounds. Add to this the $600 cassette with massive 52 tooth cog, and you can climb up just about anything. The Fox suspension components on this bike are even coated in super slippery gold Kashima, so the suspension is as smooth as it gets. But that's not even the coolest part of this bike. What if I told you that the gears and dropper post are activated by electronics and totally wirelessly? That's right, no effort and no wires. An electric motor does the work instead of your fingers. So no more sticky gear cables. I'm looking forward to riding this one, let's go. Welcome to the S-Work Stump Jumper T-Type. At $11,000, it's a good chunk of a house deposit. But what's it like to ride? Well, as you might expect, very smooth, very quiet, very light, very intuitive. Yes, there's a lot of superlatives for this bike. It is quite simply awesome. So the electronic gears are super quiet and super smooth those motors just swap the cogs really quickly and intuitively. The lockout's really smooth to turn and you're not wasting any energy. Everything feels light and responsive and expensive. Did I mention it's expensive? Oh yeah, there's even a nice little multi-tool in here. What a cool touch that is. Okay, right, here we are at the top. It's time to put the shock from climb into open mode. Hit the dropper post button another electronic gadget and we're ready to turn into the double black diamond trail on an 11,000 pound mountain bike. I think the brakes are really good. They're a bit loud because I got them wet. Whoa, this is amazing. Wow. Oh my gosh, it's fast. It's so light and responsive. Oh, the tires are super grippy. Woo. It's really, really light to pick up over stuff. The quality of the suspension is fantastic. Oh, wow. Oh, I've got mud in my eye. I wish you get mud guards for 11 grand. I didn't expect to say this, but it feels like an expensive bike. Yeah, the suspension is super grippy. It's putting all the energy into the ground and going forwards. It's great under braking. These brakes are super powerful. The, the lack of cables, the sound deadening on the frame, it's super quiet, super light. It flatters you as well, it flatters your fitness. Cool bike. What did we learn then? Well, there are some great value mountain bikes out there, whatever your budget. And all the bikes here today delivered on their price point excellently to offer an exceptional riding experience. The Caliber is basic, as you might expect for just $650, but it's well specced and offers properly sorted geometry. It's a cost-effective entry into the world of mountain biking and all the fun it has to offer. 
the $1,700 Marin Rift Zone 1 steps things up with bigger wheels and a higher spec fork and rear suspension. All things which help you ride faster and tackle challenging terrain with ease. For $5,500, the Cannondale Habit LT1 offers every feature you could realistically need for hardcore mountain biking. With burly components, high quality suspension, grippy tires, a dropper post, and a light overall weight, it is the complete package for the serious mountain biker. And of course, if you want the best of the best, the creme de la creme, then the specialized S-Works Stump Jumper is the bike for you. Sure, it's $11,000, but it offers every single gadget you could hope for in a lightweight and impeccably performing package. This bike should be on your wish list if you love carbon fiber, over the top attention to detail and future tech. Does a carbon frame and electronic gears actually make you a better rider? Well, of course not. They're great to fiddle with for the ultimate setup and they do make bikes like that a pleasure to ride but you can't beat skills and no bike is going to make you a better rider. So whatever your budget, get to know whichever bike it is you've decided to spend your hard earned cash on and don't forget to enjoy the riding. After all, that's why we ride mountain bikes in the first place. If you enjoyed this video, please do drop us a like and make sure to subscribe to the channel and let us know which of these bikes is your favorite by leaving a comment below. And if you want to keep feasting your eyes on awesome bikes, then why don't you check out this video next? All right, let's go home. Hang on a minute. I feel like we've forgotten something. Just trying to get my stretches in.